Dunchbags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here and it is time for my review of the sophomore album from the DJ, producer, and vocalist Alice in Wonderland uh, called Awake. Before I get into today's review, I did want to take a second to give a quick apology for being so silent these last couple of weeks. Honestly, I've just been really busy with school, with final projects and everything going on. As of today, I am officially done with my junior year of college, so needless to say, I am more than ready to get back on track and do some album reviews, starting with this one. Awake is Alice in Wonderland's follow-up to her 2015 debut album, Run, a project that most definitely had a lot of support from Australia's electronic music scene and a lot of momentum behind it, so my curiosity got the best of me and I decided to check it out. Some of you already know how this story ends because you might remember my review of Run back in 2015. It was one of the first albums I ever reviewed on my channel. I didn't like it, not even a little. In fact, I hated Run so much that I completely and entirely stepped away from Alice in Wonderland's music for at least two years. I think it was last year she released a remix of Crazy by Lido, and that was like the first Alice in Wonderland music I listened to in a very, very long time. Anyhow, when I found out that she was releasing a sophomore full-length album, I decided to revisit Run just because I honestly didn't remember why I hated the album so much. Uh, just a few tracks into Run, everything came back to me very clearly. The album's biggest offender was probably those big, loud, annoyingly repetitive hooks, absolutely drenched in reverb, pretty much beyond repair. The lyrics on that album carried absolutely no meaning for me, they felt more obscured than like a mumble rap project. Overall, just not the kind of album I could ever really see myself enjoying, even with time and change in taste. However, I've never knocked anyone that's enjoyed Alice in Wonderland's music. I don't think she's an objectively bad artist. In addition to that, some of my favorite artists on the planet, uh, Lido, Elohim, etc., have given their highest praises to Alice in Wonderland throughout the last couple years, so I knew I was gonna have to listen to this sophomore album. Just getting right into it, I've gotta say, I thoroughly enjoy this album more than Run. While I don't necessarily feel like Awake is as distinctive of a project as Run, I think a lot of the issues that that album had have kind of dissipated with this one. This, for me, made the tracks feel more memorable, more meaningful, even if it doesn't really veer too far from the current electro-pop formula. And don't confuse that for me saying this album is absolutely fantastic, I definitely don't think that, and this album's probably not going to be getting any top 10 spots this year, but I do think it's more tolerable and more listenable, at least for me, than her debut. Awake kicks off with some serious punch on the song Good enough, which kind of starts out with this lone melody loop, this which then gradually builds up with these epic cellos that I hear Alice in Wonderland did herself, which breaks into a pretty hefty and enjoyable drop, but not before Alex screams, is it good enough? Which is definitely one of the lines on the album that hit me the hardest. I don't think Alice in Wonderland was specifically targeting me in saying this, but more just in the direction of people that continuously do not enjoy her music despite all her efforts and her putting passion into her music. Ironically though, I do actually have a couple picks with this song, one just being that some of the loops tend to drag on a little bit too long, they do overstay their welcome just a little bit, and then secondly being that this song just could have been so much more. It ends so abruptly, it could have been a much bigger, more grand song. I do, though, like it for what it is, and I do enjoy it as an intro for this project. Although I would say it does transition really oddly into the album's second track, No, considering it goes from one of the darkest moments on the album to one of the brightest and most pop-infused. No goes for a little bit more of that dance hall EDM sound that's really big right now, thanks to DJ Snake and Major Lazer. Though I do think it puts a nice little little playful creative twist on it. I absolutely love the layering on this song and the mix down is just mm, super super clean. Despite being probably the most formulaic pop song on the entire album, I think it might be one of my favorites. I also found the album's third song okay to be extremely enjoyable, especially the last minute of the song, holy moly. I love the chopped up screaming that's happening during that last drop and then the outro of the song is just really pretty too. It reminds
reminds me of the uh, Beauty of the Unhidden Heart from the Glitch Mobs last album. The song Easy seems to be one of the more acclaimed tracks on the album, and I can see why. It's probably one of the more lyrically deep moments that happen. I really love the sincerity uh, that uh, Alex has in her voice. Though I think there's a bit of an odd dichotomy here because the song is very unfittingly dressed up as a pop song. It reminded me a lot of uh, a couple different songs from Taylor Swift's 1989 album, and I feel like that really downplays what should be one of the more intimate moments on the album. Moving on though, we get to the song High, which I feel like actually had a surprising amount of intimacy coming out of it. I admittedly hadn't taken Trippy Red for being any more than a, another throwaway trap rapper, but I actually really enjoyed his performance on this song. His performance strangely gives this song an almost ballad-like tone. I can actually feel a lot of emotion coming out of this, which I never expected coming out of an Alice in Wonderland and Trippy Red song. I will also praise this song for being extremely satisfying when the break comes. It isn't super grand or anything like that, but I don't really feel like it needs to be given the tone of the rest of the song. It also fades out and flows really nicely into the following track, Here For You with Bless Us. Here For You is another track that I enjoyed just for what it is, even though I, I'm not really entirely sure what Alice in Wonderland did on this song because uh, from what I've kind of read into, it seems that Bless Us did it, the entirety of the production on this song, so I'm guessing she did the vocals, which were pitched down, and maybe she did some songwriting too, but it, it's not really totally clear what she did on this track. Either way, I think it finds its spot really nicely in this particular place on the album. Following that is the song Church, which seems to have kind of blown up as a single recently, and I'm not going to lie, the production on this song is extremely enjoyable. It's a super catchy and fun future bass tune. So the more and more I kind of dig into this song, the less and less the lyrics make any sense to me. The entire song is based around this metaphor that Alex wants the guy that she's seeing to treat her like someone who goes to church treats church, but really, and, and I think it might be just because she has very little to no experience uh, from what I've read in a religious context, the metaphor really does not make that much sense. Like, people who go to church don't praise church, they praise Jesus. I guess maybe she thought of that, but then didn't want to make a song with, uh, with the refrain of, you better treat me like Jesus, because that might not go over so well. Anyway, kind of how it comes off is that the metaphor is really dry and not really thought out, so yeah, I enjoy the song for what it is uh, instrumentally, but the lyrics just aren't really doing anything for me. Beyond that, I feel like Awake is a pretty mixed bag. There are moments that I really enjoy, but there are moments that I really do not enjoy. Like on the song Cry, I thought the lyrics were really trashy, awkward, and out of place. Happy Place, I absolutely hated my first few times listening through it, but I've gotten a little bit more used to it. And, and the kind of annoying shouting chorus, it, it's a little bit excusable since apparently Alice in Wonderland wanted it to sound kind of obnoxious. And since Elohim did that on Xanax and I excused it then, I kind of have to do it now too. I don't really feel too strongly either way on Good Girls, Bad Boys, or Sometimes Love. I mean, they both got good qualities, but they, they don't really stand out to me in any particular way. I'm just a little bit more interested in Dreamy Dragon featuring Chief Keef. I think his performance uh, reminded me a little bit of like old school pop punk for whatever reason. And uh, I kind of think that brings an interesting tone to the album, kind of heading heading towards its close. I also think the song Hope makes a really cool interlude. It benefits a lot from some really cool production elements from Lido. Although similarly to Good Enough, I think it, it just could have been a lot more. I, I wish the song was a little bit longer and had a, a little bit more substance to it. Although I do enjoy it for what it is. Um, and then I guess the last thing that I haven't really talked about is the uh, album's outro, Awake. I think I enjoy this song almost strictly because it wraps the album up in a nice little conceptual bow, but it doesn't really do anything for me uh, in, in regards to just being a standalone song. I think it serves the concept of the album really well, um, but it, it kind of reminds me of Run in, in most of the worst ways. I'm just not big on this song uh, by itself. And that's really all I have to say about this album. I mean, I enjoy it a lot, I guess, for what it is. I think it's a significant improvement, at least in, in my vision, uh, from her first album, although I know why a lot of people are going 
going to prefer her debut over this one. This one definitely drives a little bit closer to that mainstream uh, electro pop sound. And I, I get why people aren't going to enjoy that as much. And this album, like I said at the beginning of this review, is definitely not as distinguishable um, from the other music that's coming out these days. In terms of my taste though, I definitely see this album as a bit more tolerable and something that I can even connect to at points. I would also say that I more or less enjoy a good 50% of the songs on this album, which is definitely more than run. Um, I can see myself revisiting at least a few of the tracks on here for for at least the rest of the year. Like, sure, there are definitely some throwaway tracks here, but there are also some really cool, really inventive moments. Definitely don't miss out on High, and I'd probably strongly suggest No and OK too. Those are probably my three favorite tracks on this album. I, I'd say, I, in general, I think I enjoyed the first half of the album a bit more than the second, although the second does have some nice moments uh, as well. But anyway, uh, for Alice in Wonderland's sophomore album, Awake, I'm probably feeling a strong six out of 10. If you'd like to check out this album for yourselves, I have the Spotify link down in the description below. And if you have already listened to this album, which I'm assuming a lot of you already have, uh, considering it's been a few weeks, uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below and how you think it compares to Run. Uh, anyway, I'm Landon Remixes, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll catch you later. Peace.